What's up, everybody? Okay, so um, today I'm going to be sharing with you a testimony. And for those of you who do not want to listen to the whole story, um, the point of it is I want to invite you all to join me in a 10-day forgiveness fast starting this Sunday, May 12th. Um, we are going to be fasting for 10 days from the hours of 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. If 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. does not work for you because of your physical health or um, medical situations, whatever the case may be, you can pick a fast that works for you. You could do 6 to 3. You could do 12 to 12. Um, but the one that I'm asking for everybody to do, if they can, is fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. for 10 days. Yes, 10 days. Um and we're fasting about forgiveness. Um, so that's the point of this testimony I'm about to share with you. So if you want to click off now, baby, go on, go on about your business. Email me at lightupthewoods at gmail.com uh, or text me or DM me for all the information, okay? All right, so here's a testimony. Um, I got to give you guys a little bit of background. Two things you should know about me. Number one is I forgive people very quickly. I don't know why sometimes it gets on my nerves because I don't be mad at folk for that long. Like I, I let things go. I be letting it go. Okay. Um, number two, I don't have very many friends. What I mean by that is I don't call everybody my friend. I have prayed to God for specific friendships. Um, I put a lot of effort into my friendships. I believe that in order to, um, to, in order to enjoy a low maintenance friendship, you have to go through a season of high maintenance. So I will put in my all in that season of high maintenance so that later on in the years, we can enjoy a low maintenance friendship. You know what I'm saying? But I, I love my friends hard. And so I don't really call everybody my friend. So that's the. That's the foundation there. So a couple of years ago, I had a friend who I was so grateful for. I mean, when I tell you to the T what I prayed for, this is a friend I prayed for. Okay. I was excited about this friendship. I love this friend. You call her my sister. That was my sister. Okay. You couldn't tell me no different. Blood where? Huh. That's my sister. Okay. Um, And we had a good run until we ran into a group of people who would prove to be the demise of our friendship. We started working at this place together and we were around new people and those new people started to spread lies to each of us about the other. For me, it was very clearly a plot of the enemy. I'm like, okay, well, I know my friend, so just go on over there with that, okay? Um, and I'm also not um, afraid of tough conversations. I actually appreciate them, so yeah, we could talk about whatever. Um, unfortunately, that energy was not reciprocated and the friend, and this is just my side of the story. Everybody has their side of the story. Um, the friend started believing the lies about me um, and it became very clear that I was being held at arm's length. It made me very sad. And this was during a season where there was so much going on in my family life. I mean, like, this is a friend who would pray with me through the situation that was going on with my family. And now it was like, I don't have that friend no more. Um, yeah, so it's people lying to her about me. It's stuff going on in my family life, stuff going on in my personal life. And she just wasn't there for me in the way that I needed her to be. Um, but not just not being there, but also doing the opposite of being there, if you know what I mean. Um, now, at this particular job, there was this girl who decided she don't like me. I ain't did nothing to the girl to the station. Can't tell you what I did to her. I ain't did nothing to the girl, but she ain't like me. Okay? And she decided she was going to lie on me. And she told our bosses that I did something that I did not do. Right hand to the man, I didn't do it. Right hand, right hand to the man, I didn't do it. But they believed her. And I got suspended. And then it was brought to my attention that my friend had added fuel to the fire. Ooh, that hurt me. That hurt me. It was brought to my attention that my friend was engaged, engaging in negative conversations about me. That hurt. Because let me tell you what you're never going to be able to do is talk about my friend to me. 
try it if you want to. It ain't going to end well. So to think about my friend engaging in these conversations, that, that joke of her, and then she kind of like approached me about something and she came at me a little crazy and it was just like, all right, I guess this is the end. And unfortunately, I had to say goodbye to that friendship. That really hurt me so bad. And I was in a dark place because the situation with my family hadn't turned out the way that I was praying for it to happen. And situations in my personal life had not panned out. And I was being um, reprimanded for a false accusation. And I had to quit this job that, baby, I was making a little money. And <laughs> that's why they called me the waitress extraordinaire. You ain't gonna find one like me. And I, and I had to quit because my integrity wouldn't let me stay in that facility. So I left, and I left the friendship as well. Um, and a couple months later, I started feeling sick. I didn't feel good at all. And I was going to urgent care, and I was going to... Not even a couple months later. It was like a month later. I started going to urgent care. I started going to the ER. They were running all the tests, baby. When I tell you, they was testing me for all the new stuff, all the old stuff. They were testing me for hypothetical stuff. I mean, they was running everything. They could not see. They could not figure out what was wrong with me. They could see something was wrong, but they couldn't figure it out. All the tests was coming back negative. She's fine, but she's not fine. We can see she's not fine, but the test is saying she's fine. What's going on? Okay? Um, this was months of me being sick months of me being sick I had enough energy to get through two days of work a week and then sometimes show up on Sunday to teach the children sometimes the rest of the week I was out for the count I mean when I tell you people was bringing me soup to my house I gained about 40 pounds off the food and because you know Caribbean people they think when you sick all you got to do is eat and if you give me the food I'm gonna eat it hence why y'all can see I got a little chunkier <laughs> working on it um yeah couldn't figure out what's wrong with me I took a week off of work started to feel a little bit better because I'm like yes all I needed was some rest mm -mm. after that week I caught COVID of dodging that thing now I catch COVID when I tell y'all I was dodging COVID like my life depended on it for two years I was in a room at a game night let's say there's 25 people in this room right 22 of them tested positive for COVID I was around all of them and did not catch it only three of us in that room that day didn't get COVID I was one of them and now I get COVID you got to be kidding me. The day after I test negative for COVID, guess what? I went to work thinking everything's hunky-dory. Nope. I'm sitting down on a chair looking through some files and I see a shadow. And I look up. A shelf is coming down on me. An entire shelf and all the stuff that's on it keeps tumbling down on me. Baby, for the first time in my life, I've played three sports for the first time in my life. I have three championships, which means I was going hard in the paint for the first time in my life. I got a concussion and it was bad. I mean, the doctor said, if you start throwing up, you need to come back. The next day I was throwing up. It was a, that's how I found out concussions work differently for everybody. Everybody's re body responds to a concussion differently. Mine was very adverse. It was bad, okay? Fast forward to December. Now, I'm still sick this whole time. Fast forward to December. I go home to my mama house for uh, Christmas break. And um, I'm in my bed praying to God. And I go from praying to arguing. I don't know when I left the prayer, but now I was having a full-blown argument made up in my mind with the people who offended me, including my friend, including her family, including the people who, who falsely accused me. I was going in. I, I don't even remember when I stopped praying. It was like a shift happened. I felt 
this dark spirit taking over me and I was just filled with anger. I had not yet forgiven her. And I start asking the Lord, bruh, I, I don't know what to do, but this is, what do I do? And the Lord says, I need you to do a 10 day forgiveness fast. What that got to do with me being sick? You the healer. I need you to heal me. What, we not talking about forgiveness right now. God says, I need you to do a 10 day forgiveness fast. <sighs> okay. So I do a little research. I find some resources online. I do a little YouTube playlist of sermons on forgiveness. I get me a journal. And in the top of January, I start doing a 10-day forgiveness fast. And on day two of this fast, I was well. On the second day of this fast, since the second day of that fast, two years ago, was that two years ago? Was that one year ago? A year ago. <laughs> I have not been sick since. I've gotten like, like when I came back from Cancun, I remember it was stupid hot over there. I came back to cold New York and I had like the sniffles for 24 hours. I don't really stay sick for long. I had the sniffles for 24 hours as my body reacclimated to the temperature. But outside of that, I have not been sick since the second day of that fast. I continued the fast for the whole 10 days and the Lord was bringing up for me. I thought it was just that one friend I had to forgive. The Lord was bringing up for me things that I don't know were buried deep down. I'm st I'm saying I don't really I don't really be holding people in unforgiveness, but apparently the Lord was like, "Let's move that over." You see that one right there? Yep. Just let's just pick yeah. So let's forgive that one. Okay. Let's read through Mm -hmm. Look all the way down there, all the way. You see that one? Let's let's bring that up and let's forget that one too. Okay, let's forget that one too. Let, I mean, he was bringing stuff up for me, and I was I forgive him, I forgive him, I forgive him, Lord, I forgive him, I forgive him, I forgive him. I'm in my journal. I forgive him, I forgive him, I forgive him. I forgive him, 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 I forgive him. I was forgiving everybody. Shoot, I forgive the rock that I stumbled on. I forgive the twig that made me trip. I was forgetting everybody because this freedom felt good. Okay? I was healed. And that's how I learned that unforgiveness will manifest itself physically. When you're holding people, when you're holding on to bitterness, when you're holding on to anger and offenses, it's doing nothing to them and everything to you. It'll make you sick. It'll make you sick. And even if you don't feel the sickness, the Bible also says that the Lord forgives those who forgive others. So that means if you walk around here talking about God, how come you're not hearing me? He hears you. He just needs you to forgive a couple people first. He needs you to leave your gift at the altar and go fix it with them and then come back. So whether you have been holding people in unforgiveness um, or you're not sure if you have or there's a certain situation that's still bothering you or there's a couple people that every time they pull up, I would like to invite you to join this fast starting this Sunday, May 12th. We're going to be fasting 6 to 6 for 10 days. Okay? You email me at lightupthewoods.com. Nope, <laughs> that's my website. Lightupthewoods at gmail.com. You can email me. Um, you can DM me or you can text me if you have my number. I will send you all the resources. We're going to get started this Sunday. I ain't never hosted a corporate fast before, so y'all pray for your girl. Um, and I'll do maybe a few lives or just regular video posts um, to continue talking about the fast and all those things. Um, 
Maybe I might start a Zoom so that we can meet maybe every day. I don't know. My schedule be a little crazy, but don't don't hold me on that. Uh, I'll send out the detail. I, I, I'll figure it out <laughs> by Saturday night. I'll have everything, all the details. Uh, but all I know is starting this Sunday, it fell on my spirit this morning, and I was like, God, I will obey. Um, starting this Sunday, May twelfth, we are going to do a forgiveness fast for ten days. I am free. I am healed. And I just can't keep that to myself. So I invite you to walk in this freedom and to walk in this healing with me. Please join me starting this Sunday with this forgiveness fast. And if you have a friend who you think should be doing it, you let them know, send them the video, and you could do the fast with them just, you know, as support. Get yourself a notebook. Um, that's really all you need because I'm going to send you all the rest of the resources. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all. That's my testimony, y'all. Uh, I tried very hard to tell that story without, you know, putting too much business out here in these streets. Um, uh, praise report the friend and I have talked through it, so like, they ain't after the forgiveness because the Lord knew I couldn't have that conversation before it. Um, but yeah, so it's all good, it's all good and gravy. I'm chilling, we, we cool. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that testimony so that I can show you, illustrate to you the power of forgiveness and the power of unforgiveness over your life. So let, let them people go, baby. Let them go. Let them go. Selfishly do it for yourself. That's all I'm saying. Alrighty. Well, until next time, you have a duty to shine your light in this world. So go on and light up the world. Bye.